Hello and welcome, my dear modelers, to my small hobby YouTube channel. My name is Tomo, and this is a build video. Well, sort of. Well, it's been a long time since I've actually made a build video for you guys, so I've decided after the last review video to make one. For this reason, I have chosen a Trumpeter 172nd scale model kit, a T62 Russian main battle tank. This one. Honestly, I could have not picked a better model to build because it was a breeze and a real joy to make. I've chosen to build this model for several reasons. One of which is it's a 172nd scale model, which means it's small and compact and it will fit on any shelf if you're tight on space. It also means that it has a relatively low part count and it, it's easy to assemble. I've done a review video on this small trumpeter tanks. You can check out the link up above. Also, this is a very good model for any beginner or someone who wants to get back into this hobby. So where did everything go wrong? Well, the actual painting and assembling part, done. Here it is. Fantastic. To understand what actually happened with the video, we have to rewind the clock a little bit. A couple of months ago, I got my new phone. And it's great. It's perfect. It works fantastic. It's a Samsung S20 and um, I couldn't be more happy. I have actually filmed the first part of the build video on this particular phone. Previously, I used a Galaxy S7 phone, which I actually used for the better part of the videos that you see on this channel, you know, a couple of years back. And the camera on that phone is fantastic, a high quality camera, and I wanted to use it in the build videos. When I started to film the second part of the build video with the old phone, I was recording, I was going through the whole process very methodically and I was really very happy with the shots that I got because I reviewed them all and they were fantastic and I said to myself, this is really going to be a wonderful build video with some extra tutorial bits inside. All well and dandy, what's the problem? Well, when I actually finished the model, or actually when I just had to install the decals, um, I realized that I have locked the telephone with the swipey thing on the pad. Well, I forgot the pattern and for the life of me, I couldn't open the telephone. And then I got kind of scared because everything was on the phone and like if I can't unlock the screen, I can't get to the files, I can't download them and all that. So it was like panic mode. And I remember that I've actually linked up the telephone with the cloud. So every single video or picture that I do, it would sync up. But for some reason, but for some reason, um, it didn't sync up, probably due to the fact that I have a very crappy Wi-Fi on the, in this house. Anyway, after at least a couple of hours of searching the internet, what to do, the only thing that left was actually to just reset the phone and hope for the best. Now, at that point, I should have remembered to take out the SD card installed inside the phone because that's where all the files were saved. Yeah. So once the phone was reset and I was able to get inside the phone again, naturally all the video footage was lost forever. Yeah, I really can be a doo-doo head. Then I was left with a dilemma, what to do? I decided to actually go on with the video because it's still a build video, even though it's a half build video and the rest I'll just narrate. Hello and welcome if you have just joined me, my name is Tomo and this is the build video, well sort of a build video of a Russian T-62 main battle tank from Trumpeter in 170 second scale. As you can see, I am not exactly at home here, I am at work, uh, it's a Saturday and there's really nothing to do on Saturdays usually so I decided to build one in the shop. Uh, I'm just showing you the box, the contents of the box, the instruction manual, which is this tank is really very simple, rudimentary, and I would recommend it to a beginner because it's just a low part count tank and easy to assemble. The first thing, of course, is to cut out from the sprue with the side cutters, um, these little drive wheels, or actually not drive wheels, but just wheels in general that guide the tracks along. They're pretty simple. They have some detail. It's great. And of course, there's a little bit of a seam line on top, but it doesn't really matter to be honest. I've sanded down the stub that was left after cutting, 
but you really don't really need to do that because they're gonna be inside the tracks and you won't able to see them so you can cheat a little bit but I had time to kill so I sanded them down individually one by one at least to a fairly reasonable state I would say I would I didn't go too nuts on them this process of sanding and tidying up the edges took me about five minutes then I dry fitted all the wheels onto the base of the tank to see if it fits if there's gonna be any errors I did for the both sides, you can see they're just stuck on the axles and the other side of the wheel is basically molded into the track so you just push them on and it's done. Here is the drive wheel, actual drive wheel from the other side and that's basically how it looks. Very simple, rudimentary, nothing that special. See here are the tracks and I'm just taking out the other part of the drive wheel that goes on the back and it's gonna be glued in the tracks themselves because you see that there's a little sprocket here on one side it's smooth because it simulates the sprocket in its socket <laughs> sprocket in the socket it's a rhyme every time okay stop it just like with the other wheels I tidy up the edges I just scrape off the stubs that were left from cutting out from the sprue and of course then I will proceed to glue them in place on in the track itself and here is gonna be a close-up shot of this actual very exciting process a little dab of glue and then you just push the sprocket into its place into the socket <laughs> and you can see how the track is made both tracks are the same so they're just one piece and it's really a very interesting way of making a track for the scale because you don't have to fiddle around with uh, vinyl tracks which can be a little bit of a tedious process and we're done with the tracks now let's go on to the upper hull of the tank this is the upper hull and I have to cut out some pieces that go on the upper hull such as the lights, the fuel tanks, the guard and two hooks on the front ever since I made a review video of this trumpeter tanks in 1 7 second scale I was really looking forward to actually building one and this particular one as well because I really like the box art I must admit and I wanted to replicate it as close to the box art as possible um, and at this point in the process I'm building this and it's really enjoyable I'm having just the best time ever and it's really easy really simple to assemble even these smaller pieces if you have some tweezers and a steady hand you're not gonna have that much problems whatsoever so a beginner this is totally a beginner model here I'm using a, a little bit of a uh, zoom on my phone of course I'm sacrificing pixels to make a zoom but you know you get the point why I did it because I didn't want to move the phone too much and this is the front I don't, guard or shield attached to the upper hull now I'm going to proceed to attach these fuel tanks on the side which again are really straightforward and simple you just slap some glue on the plastic and attach the fuel tanks it's basically like Legos but you use glue there was some sanding involved prior to making this shot but it was just minor detail work and I just wanted to make sure that the pieces are gonna be flush with the upper hull once I did the left side I attended the right side and I'll be attaching the rest of the fuel tanks and the ammo box I believe that's the ammo box on the front and yeah really simple stuff And this is the fruit of my labor. I have attached all the pieces on the top of the hull, apart from these two front lights, where I just applied a liberal amount of Tamiya glue, and uh, then proceeded to put place these lights in their slots. If you're wondering why uh, there's a little black spot on one of these, it's because it flew away on the floor and I stepped on it. So that happens. But yeah, I managed to secure it fine in the end. Here I'm applying some regular Tamiya cement with a white cap. This is just regular glue, um, thick glue. And I'm attaching these two pieces, the upper and the lower hull together. Uh, pre before I did that though, I sanded down the bottom of the upper hull to make it 
I guess, more flush or even, but you don't really need to do that. That was something that I did. But at the end of the day, the tracks are hiding this uh, surface and it's not really necessary. The two fuel drum assemblies um, are probably the most misfired pieces in the whole sprue. They're not exactly flush on either side, so I did use a liberal amount of putty to make sure that they're even and flush. Um, but again, it's not a big deal because it's just putting some putty, waiting until it dries and then sanding it down to make it even. And it's a good technique for a beginner to practice on so that once you actually go and build something bigger, you will have some experience in how to do that properly. So this is how I did it. I just dabbed a little bit on each end and used a little stick to try to make it flush. That doesn't really work that well because it's really uh, wet but once it's a little bit dry you will be able to maneuver it in the right space uh, and I'm using acrylic putty AK103. Ah, uh, the barrel. So this is one of the modifications that I have made to the tank and the, the barrel when it's, once you send it down and you get rid of the seam line you lose a lip on the edge. So to replace it I was using Trumpeter's pipe set, uh, the, the, the bigger one, the 2.8 millimeter one and I just stuck it on to the edge to see if it fits and I measured out how long it should be, cut it into length and of course due to the autofocus being stupid lost a lot of footage. See yeah it's uh, focusing on the wrong things and once I got it into shape I just used some super glue and attach it to the end of the nozzle and I had to do it really quickly because the super glue was setting really fast and I was kind of nervous but but at the end I managed to attach this sucker so this is how it looks like see nice and pretty it's probably a little bit too thick for the scale but ah it's fine so here I'm attaching the mantlet for the cannon and then of course I attach the bottom cover plate for the cupola using again regular Tamiya cement uh, to have some time to maneuver it. And of course attach the hatch from which uh, the tankers emerge from their little hole inside. It's just a matter of placing some glue on top and pushing it in. And here is of course the attachment of the main cannon. And the spotlight it goes on top of the commander's hatch. Again, a bit fiddly this stuff, but uh, nothing that a steady hand and patience can't fix. And of course, under spotlight on top. And this is the third one and final spotlight it goes on the cupola. This is the biggest one. It has the cover plate on it and the little uh, Russian symbol where the decal goes and again it's the more frustrating to put this on because it's on, on an awkward angle um, but uh, I managed to do it so this is how it looks all fully assembled and this is basically the whole tank just assembled prior to being primed and now we just have well the painting left but um, yeah lost the footage so Let's uh, look at the second part of this build. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here is the model in question. Um, it's basically just finished. It's a little bit shiny because I've just applied a matte coat varnish. Um, unfortunately, there's nothing I can do to show you the second part because I have lost footage as you probably know by now. Um, but this is how it actually looks. Um, it's a, disassembled from two parts, but I just have to put this back on. It's gonna be fine. Anyway, I wanted to touch briefly touch up on a couple of modifications that I have made to the model itself to make it more realistic. So if I show you this box art, here you can see this model that um, is inside the box, and it's quite a bit different from this one, uh, and it. It says here on the box art, actual model may vary from image on the box. And it's true, I believe this is a much bigger scale model than the actual uh, model that you get inside. And the reason that I say this is because it has far more detail. Like these little hooks on the cupola, the handlebars, the rings on the fuel tank. There's a guard and this little shifter thingy for the main gun. There's uh, 
like um, a little bit more um, texture to the cupola itself like because this might be a, a cast iron and this little edge here or the frame is far more prominent um, and of course loads of other smaller details like this little mechanism here on the side I mean there's things that are just missing from the 172nd scale model and also the little sides here and on the sides here and all just things that are a little missing now that doesn't mean that the model this model sucks and in fact this model went together and assembled really very well and quickly and I was really happy with the result um, the one thing that I did kind of messed up a little bit is the fact that it's far more it's far darker than it's supposed to be it's supposed to be more light green like here when I apply the decals there's a little bit more of a green patch and on the and there's a little more black that's because I gave it a wash and I didn't really I, I think I applied too much of it um, so that's one thing that I should have attended to so it's far more darker see here where I didn't spray it, it it's supposed to be this color but it's like this very dark olive color I tried to replicate the uh, rust on the um, tracks I tried to replicate the used tracks on the edges so they're a little bit too white or a little bit too prominent and too shiny I should have done it a little bit better or differently but I think I managed at least to some degree to capture this um, I've also wanted to manage to capture this little exhaust here um, or at least the events so yeah they're black or dark they're not as prominent here I also had to manufacture the two rings on the back this one is far smaller but I didn't I couldn't use a smaller styrene piece I could have used a smaller but I didn't have it so I just used a bigger one but okay it's a start I've also tried to replicate these little handles on the cupola but as I attached them unfortunately they just broke off too many times that's why you have this little that's why you have these little bullet holes this is where the, the handles were previously but I took them off <clears throat> then I actually wanted to replicate this rough surface texture of the cupola itself because when you get the cupola inside the kit it's really very smooth and it didn't look very well so as you can see the texture on the cupola is rough and I achieved this um, by using to me a cement I just slapped it on the cupola and then used the bristles of the brush to just kind of poke under the plastic because the, it made the plastic very soft and, and, and soluble and malleable not soluble malleable <laughs> so I just did that randomly and I got this effect now the other way to achieve this would be to use uh, putty and like dilute uh, the putty a little bit and just paint it on with the brush wait until it dries a little bit and then use the bristles of the brush itself to make these little uh, imperfections in the in the surface um, what else did I do that I tried to replicate okay I wanted to replicate the little guard on the here on the top but it didn't really work out because it was just too small you don't get this inside the kit so it's really comp a complex thing I tried to look at the reference photos but it was just a big hassle I wanted to replicate this mechanism here on the gun as well but again it's it was way too complicated and I, I couldn't really attach it anywhere because there's no space here so I didn't do that um, I wanted to replicate the little dusting effect and I might do this in the future because um, right now it's just plain old cupola it's a bit rustic but that's basically it if I attach this whole thing together you see the tank it looks like this I mean, for our first tank, it's not bad. So, what paints did I use to create this illusion? I firstly I sprayed the whole model with this little guy. Spray, sprayed it with primer. Then I applied a black coat primer, black. I used white, just plain old flat white, to highlight the. Um, 
exposed areas, more exposed areas like the on the cupola here on the hatches and on the surface of this little uh, ammo and fuel can canisters and on top here. But because then I applied this and I, I applied this a little bit too, too thickly, so the whole pre-shading thing kind of went out the window. So that's a lesson for me in the future, not to do, not to overdo it. Uh, I applied this on the whole model, um, but I uh, attached the track separately. Um, and the reason that I sprayed everything with this color is because uh, the wheels are in this Russian protective 4BO <laughs> color. Um, after that, I proceeded to paint the individual details. So here on the exhaust vents or the exhausts, um, I used just, first of all, a wash. But the wash was a little bit too gentle, so I applied black, flat black. So that's made it black. And for the rust effects, like here, um, you see the chipping thing. I basically use this. It's really good. Not that I'm promoting this, but you have all the necessary colors. Sorry. All the necessary colors to make rust happen. And they're really good colors. I like them very much. Especially the chocolate chipping one, and I sorry, I made a. Uh, there's a video out there from the YouTuber named Night Shift. I followed his tutorial on how actually to make this effect. I mean, I could have done a better job to be honest, uh, but for my first attempt, I was pretty okay. For the uh, silvery bits, I just use this natural steel color again, AK. For the whole wash, I use this Mig blue black. I used too much of it, that's why it's so dark. Don't do that. And for the rust effect, for a more rustic feel, I used the enamel wash light rust uh, for green vehicles. Yeah, uh, oh yeah, and the, of course, uh, rubber black for the rubber on the tires. Um, and I think that's pretty much everything. Oh yeah, I mixed this color for myself. I got this color by mixing this as a base. I added some yellow and white. And I kind of got this to match this. So, yeah, that's how I achieved this particular look. The placement of the decals was made by basically using the decal solution. And after that, I went over it with Mark Fit Strong to make it even more malleable to the surface. So you can now see um, the texture through the decal itself if you can focus. Um, and I will weather this down a little bit because it's a bit, bit too um, white here on, on the box hard. As you see, it's a little bit more dirty. So I'll be dirtying it up a little bit. And that's how I achieved this particular look. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. So uh, what can I say? Thank you so very much for watching. If you have been, thank you for liking, sharing, commenting, and of course subscribing now. And I'll see you guys soon in the next one. Have a good one, guys. Bye-bye.